Are you Googling or YouTubing inflation, recession, Fed, Augusta, Georgia market? Well, let's dive into these and discuss how it affects the Augusta, Georgia and surrounding areas market. I will also be doing a deep dive into the data for the Augusta market and some examples of how a micro market can be different from a macro market and why that is so important when buying and selling. My name is Ariel Wright and I am a local realtor in Augusta, Georgia. So why is this not like 2008? Where are interest rates going? What drives mortgage rates? If you ask a realtor and a mortgage professional, is the market good? They'll most likely tell you, yes, the market is good. But how? When it comes to interest rates, housing demand is driven by rates and lower rates increase demand. But what drives mortgage rates, most would say the Fed. But height rates recently were 1.5% and the mortgage rates came down. It's actually inflation. And the reason why that is, is because if your money doesn't stretch as far when it comes to gas, groceries, and other commodities like it used to, uh, when somebody is going to take out a high mortgage, when rates go up, it becomes less feasible and the homeowner or potential consumer will take that into consideration, which means less people are going to take loans. So let's break down inflation in basic terms. It's too many dollars for too few goods, and that is inflation. So this happened with toilet paper in 2020, and it happened with houses. And you have to look at inflation and real estate. And when there were all of the stimulus checks being given out to the public, this added too many dollars and too few houses. And how does the government try to overcome inflation? Inflation is coming down because the Fed is trying to destroy demand and kill jobs. And when they hike rates, they make the cost of borrowing much more expensive. So what's inflation? And too many dollars chasing too few goods and 80% of what Americans use is credit. If it's more expensive to use credit, then the average American is less likely to borrow money now. And they are less likely because the payment is so much more. And this also means if you already own a home and you go to look at getting a new home, that may have been a payment of 1800, but now it's 3000. The homeowner may be more likely to keep the house they currently have and wait until interest rates come back down. So rates historically go down when we have a recession and we saw ourselves in a recession in 2020 and we also saw rates go down. And one of the reasons why we did have a crash back in 2008 is because there were more houses than household formations. And so builders have learned from this. And so it's important to look at this for the Augusta market. So we're going to use the National Association of Realtors housing shortage tracker for the Augusta, Richmond County, Georgia, South Carolina area. So the housing shortage tracker computes how many new permits are issued for every new job. And based on the historical average, the permit is issued for every two jobs. So in our market, the amount of permits that were put out is 3,831. And the amount of new jobs for that particular area is 3,800. So based on this data, there is a sufficient supply. We have a really strong market here and the permits given are a one to one ratio. So one job, one permit to build, which is good considering that was a part of the issue with 2008. Less household formations per houses built. Across the United States, there are only a couple of places, mobile, Alabama and Jackson, Mississippi, that do not have new jobs incoming. The rest of the United States either has sufficient jobs or a high housing shortage. So real estate is hyper localized, even down to certain neighborhoods do better than others within a city. And so now we're gonna dive into the Maybaum January 2023 monthly indicators for the data compiled for January 2023. So the housing market began the year in a state of rebalance with many buyers and sellers 
remaining cautious while they wait to see where the market is headed. Nationally, pending sales rose 2.5% month to month, marking the first increase since May. Well, sales of existing homes fell 1.5% as of last measure, according to the National Associations of Realtors. Demand for housing persists, but higher mortgage rates have cut into housing affordability, with total home sales down 17.8% last year compared to 2021, and new listings were down 16.7% to 669. Pending sales decreased 20.7% from January 2022 to 681 for the eighth consecutive month of year-over-year -year declines. Inventory grew by 30%, prices moved higher as median sales prices came up to 5.2% to 261,000 and days on market increased to 102 days. Months of supply of inventory is up to 1.9 months, indicating that supply increased relative to demand. As sales have slowed down, Time on market is increasing with the average home spending 26 days on the market as of last measure, according to National Association of Realtors. Now, sellers' concessions have made a comeback, giving buyers more time and negotiating power when shopping for a home. Although home prices remain high, mortgage rates have declined steadily throughout January. They have come up now since this report has made to about 6% but it was fallen to the lowest since September, uh, which did bring in a recent surge for mortgage demand. Now we know that lower rates aid in affordability, but we know that rates have come up to about 6% six since then, and we have seen a little bit of a decline. But in our market, we also have a very insulated market with Fort Gordon being here and PCS season coming in. So we should still see some home sell and some people purchase as they move into the area. If you take a look at the market overview though, new listings dropped from 803 to 669, leading us into pending sales going from 859 to 681. And these numbers make sense because less homes will be pending if less homes come onto the market meaning that less homes close, which is why we went from 676 to 422 homes close. Moving on to housing prices here is where things can get a little interesting. So days on market went from 86 days to 102. Median sales prices went from 248 to 291,982, which is a 5% increase. The average sales price went from approximately 280 to approximately 292,000, which is a 4% increase. And what houses were priced for and what they actually sold for was 99% to now 96.8%. So there was a learning curve between homeowners and agents when they went to sell. House affordability has significantly dropped from 116% to 89%, meaning that the average salary could buy 100%. The, the less affordable this market is for the median salary of 43,000 in Augusta, inventory went up from 1,085 to 1,415 houses for sale, which means that the months of supply rose from 1.2 to 1.9 months of supply. And the reason why this is interesting is because when rates went up to around 7%, buyers became more scarce and sellers and agents that priced homes above market value did not set the home up for success. And those homes stayed on the market for longer or may not have sold at all without pricing adjustments, condition changes, marketing, or proper access to the property. Even though Augusta is a well-insulated market due to military, medical, industry, and cyber jobs, when it comes to putting your home on the market and you're setting yourself up for success, it is important to look at the data at a hyper-local level. For example, these neighborhoods statistically achieved 100% or over the original list price. Some examples are Orchard Hills and the average list price of 277,000 lists and selling at 278,000. 
Orchard Hills also has an average days of market of 50 versus the average for the county of 102 days. Canterbury Farms is another example with the list price being around 325 and the sold price being 326. Canterbury Farms days on market is 78, which is also lower. My point to you is that you should really know these numbers going into putting your home on the market to help manage expectations. Make sure that you ask your agent all of these questions and do your due diligence. Sellers can lose thousands of dollars by not being educated on the selling process and what to expect. For buyers, this is an advantage that not all homes will be set up for success. And this is when you can find what I call a opportunity. An agent that knows the market will also be able to guide you through the offer process and ask for things like closing costs, repairs, termite letter, so that nothing is left off of the table for you and your family. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you are getting your data from Zillow, the news, your dad, maybe your agent who just got a license, who knows? Just do your own research to find somebody that can break down why a market is good or bad and know that within markets, there are micro markets within cities that are very important to take into consideration whether you are buying or selling. Other things to know is how inflation affects rates, the supply and demand of homes and jobs in that market and how they affect buyers and sellers in that market. If you look at another market, it is not apples to apples. I will get off my soapbox now. If you are a buyer relocating to the area or a seller that has some questions whether or not you're gonna sell now or wondering about your investment, give me a call at 706-619-9399 or email me at arielwright706 at gmail.com. If you felt this video was helpful, give it a like and a subscribe to my channel for everything Augusta, Georgia real estate.